Okay, so we're gonna just do a brief walkthrough on how to design a system for someone that just purchased a house or just moved in. And I'm here with a, another mentor of mine, Jarrett. So this deal for Brian is in Northern California. It is PG&E territory. The address is in Fairfield. It's four beds, two baths, and 2169 square feet. He came from a smaller place, a condo or unit of some sort. So one of the ways you can try to guesstimate usage is by looking at the old house that they came from. Jarrett did get a bill from the old house. Um, when it's a condo though, or a townhouse or a unit, it's not as impactful, but if it's a single family house to a single family house, that may be beneficial depending on some other criteria we'll talk about. So looking at the prior utility bill from where he used to live on the condo, he only used 288 kilowatts, right? Not gonna help us out too much. We don't know really much about that condo um, townhouse unit. So that would be one of the ways that you could try to guesstimate the usage for the new house. I would also factor in with that as well as that was the last month they were there before they moved into the new home. So right, who knows right. how much they were actually there and actually totally. used as well. Yep. So you could get the square footage if it was a close, closer match, you get the square footage, divide by square footage, annual kilowatt hours divided by square footage and get some formulas to give you an idea. Now, so looking at the old, um, sorry, looking at the new house, you said it's a family of four, like two kids and two adults? He actually said family of five and three are there all day long. Okay. So we have a two-story house with possibly vaulted ceiling right here, which means with, without an AC exposed, there could be higher AC usage. Without, yeah, without, without an attic, you're gonna have higher AC usage with a vaulted ceiling. It takes longer to cool off that big open area when you walk in. Um, he wasn't in a two-story before. He is now in a two-story. Two stories use more energy. The upstairs gets hotter than a downstairs. This house does not currently have a pool or jacuzzi. Did he mention anything like that? Did not. Does, does he have an electric car? He does not. Okay, so those are things you know you definitely would want to know to throw into the mix. As far as an electric car as well, um, I generally try to add 2,000 kilowatt hours to the production. So here's a little cheat sheet. If they drive 10,000 miles a year on electric and they're only charging at home, 2,700 kilowatt hours is what you would want to add to your production. Okay. Um, and another little cheat sheet that I have, you know, if they get an electric dryer, it could be a little bit of kilowatts per year. If they switch to an electric water heater, it could be a little bit more electricity. An electric stove compared to a gas and then air conditioner really uses the most here um, and again this is just a range of electricity the average home consumes 11,000 kilowatts per year guys so just keep that number in mind it just so happens that we happen to be at 11.3 so that's a coincidence uh, that's a good sign but let's keep going so this new house, 2169 square footage. Now, being in the industry a long time, I know that if I multiply that by four, five, or six, that gives us the approximate kilowatt hours we need annually. 
So for example, 2169 times five is 10,845 or 11,000. Pretty coincidence, right? Like average house is 11, multiplied by five is 11. But this guy is a family guy. It's a two story home. He's not by the beach, so he's gonna blast that AC, central AC. I think we should multiply this number by six. And this is where a little swag comes into play. Um, a silly, wild ass guess. There is no magic number. The house was built in 98, so it's not terribly old. It has some decent insulation. Um, and if we go look at his current build, Jarrett, you said he's been in the new house for how long? He's been there for about a month. This bill reflects two weeks worth of usage. So two weeks, 360 kilowatts. Safe to say that's about 700 to 800 if it was a full month, I would say. Yeah, but that's not even, that's before the AC starts blowing, right? Right. Yeah. So these numbers look a little bit low to me. If we bring this up to 13,000, which again is the square footage times six. Two story home, family home during the summer, central AC, that's why I'm switching to six versus five. If there was a pool, if there was an electric car, pools or jacuzzis, you're definitely switching to six or adding a little bit extra. Um, if the home is really, really old, the AC is really, really old, you want to add a little extra. These are just rough guesses, guys. There's no way to be exact. Worst case, they end up with a credit with net metering. Um, best case, they break even. Um, you know, worst case, they have to pay the utility a little bit of money at the end of the 12 month period, but they're still way better off from going solar with you. And keep in mind, you can always add a minimum of seven panels in the future if that made sense for them. So kind of putting it all into perspective, guys, you have to ask a lot of questions. How many people in the home? Is someone home during the summer? How old is the home? Electric car, pool, jacuzzi, vaulted ceilings, two-story, one-story, how many AC condenser units, tankless water heater or not? You know, just try to be the professional. Ask all these questions um, as if we know an approximate number, approximate guess. And when it comes down to it, around four, five, or six multiplied by the square footage and take into consideration other characteristics. And then let's look at the numbers. So 13,000 kilowatt hours, um, you know, I don't know why May is so high here, but let's bring this down to 900, 900. July is gonna go up a little bit. August is when it's really gonna go up. September is really gonna go up. October, it's going to come back down, November back down, and December back down. Everybody has this general trend in California. Up in the summer, back down in the winter. What's April sneaking in there for some reason? Let's get this number back to 13,000. There we go. Estimated production, it just so happens we're already at 11,353 guys, but you know, customize that. Um, now we can get up to 105% of an estimated usage of 12,900 kilowatts. So in conclusion, this is probably a deal that I would sell. And we're gonna to talk to him, right? We're gonna have a conversation. We're gonna put this on a 20 or 2.99. You're gonna work with a mentor like Jarrett or me. You know, maybe we're gonna do a dollar margin. Let's get him that 30 year insurance. 
Make sure to check on that electrical panel. He might need that. And then let's go ahead and get them the 12 month stimulus rebate. 180 a month for everything we just added. 30 year insurance, MPU, 13,000 kilowatt hours. Um, for some reason, the 12 month stimulus did not show up. There you go, 192. PG&E guys, come on, 372. This probably is a little bit high. They're probably more like around 28 cents. 300 bucks or 192. Kind of a no brainer. And by the way, we're making seven to eight thousand dollars. What would Sunrun charge for this system? Well, they only have a four point nine nine, and they're not given twenty five hundred dollar rebate. Their price per watt is about four dollars to four dollars and ten cents as well. So what we just did is we competed with Sunrun's pricing, but we added on an MPU, we added on a 30 year insurance, and we got on a $2,500 rebate. Then let's go ahead and switch to 2.99, cause Sunrun's gonna show about 214. You just went to 192, crushing your competition. So wrap it up. Um, that's about how you would estimate a new home that hasn't been moved into yet. This is what I would sell very confidently. And then at 192 for 32 panels, do the math, 192 divided by 32 panels. $6 a panel. So Mr. Customer, we could drop a few panels, we could add a few panels. How do you feel about 190 with the package that we're giving you? Any questions, Jarrett? No, that's it, you nailed it, JB, as always. Alrighty, I will stop recording. If you have any questions, guys, please reach out to Jarrett in Northern California as a mentor or myself, Jonathan Bernasa, will be happy to mentor you on any deals just like this one.